All right, everyone, welcome to our week 13 live classroom. Uh, congrats on making it this far. If we're about done, this is our last live classroom of the course. Um, halfway through our, our session today, I'll be stopping the recording and starting a new one for our final exam preparation. And we'll just go through the practice exam that I, that I shared in the announcement. Good morning, Emily. Um, and so anyways, for today, for chapter, well, for week 13, we're still in chapter 10 on arrays. And so I wanted to just go through some programming assignments with you guys. Uh, but before we do that, do you guys have any questions from last week? I have a general question. Yeah. Is there a way it. to look at the review questions from other uh, lessons, like the quizzes from other lessons without actually having to redo them? Because <laughs> I tried to go back to past like weeks and yeah. look at the quiz that we had, but it wants me to redo the quiz. Now. Interesting. Um, that, that's a really good question. Give me, let me write that down, and I will investigate that for you, Lena. All right. Sorry, I don't have a direct answer on that. I'm going to have to look into that. It's a good question. All right, but I will, and I'll let you know a little bit later. Any other questions? I was just going to say, um, Elena, have you, do you select the um, attempts or do you select the quiz? Because if you select the attempts, it'll let you see your past attempts. I think I might have selected the quiz. OK, I'm going to look into that. Thank you, Christy. So Christy, is that in like the, let me scroll up here. Is that in the grades, my grades tab right here? You can do it in the grades or in the quizzes. Okay. Awesome. Thank you, Christy. All right. And any other questions or comments? Okay. In that case, let's go ahead and start writing some code. Welcome, Amy. Glad you could make it. Thanks. All right. So we have a few options today. Uh, let me drag this over here. Okay, so we have all of these exercises in chapter 10 that we can work on. The extra credit we're not going to do, obviously, and um, exercises two, three, four, and five are your assignments from this week and last week. So we also won't touch on those. Morning, James. Um, so let's look at this. So the first one right here, I'm not sure if we're going to have time for all of them because we're also going to go through the... Um, practice exam, but I want to do at least like three or four with you guys. So write a function that creates and returns an array that contains the values 1908, 5, and 10. The function must have this header at Mother's Day. We actually looked at that one last week. So let's, does anyone want to see that one or are you guys okay skipping it for now? I'm good skipping it. Okay. Uh, let's see, the next one on here, six and seven. Write a function to rotate the elements in an array to the left. In other words, the function must move each element from its location to the location immediately to the left, and then move the first value from its location to the last location, not necessarily in that order. The function must have this header, function rotate left. For example, if the rotate left function were called like this, the rotate left function or would change the list array to be like this. So just putting the first element in it at the very end of the array. Okay, anyone want to see this one? Yeah, I'd like to work on that yeah. one. Yeah, I actually do too. All right, so let's do this. Let me pull this over here. All right, we are going to, we'll save this to our desktop for now. Uh, what was that, 10.6? I think so. Okay. Grab our template here. All right, and let's look at this. So write a function. So here's our function name. So how do you how do you guys want to start this off? The defining table. Perfect. Let's do it. Okay, so what is our input for this? Let me blow this up a little bit. Do we have an input? Uh, 
No, I think just move the elements around. Yeah. So notice right here it says not even a program. You're just supposed to write a function. Okay. So all we need to do is write this function. But in order to kind of test this function, um, I think we should test it out with a couple of different arrays. But yeah, we're, we're not even going to have an input. Okay. So we'll just say none. All right. So processing for rotate left. How, how, do, how do you guys want to tackle this? Looking in my book so I can remember how to do swap, but I think you have to keep swapping. So I don't quite know though. <laughs> yeah, as far, as far as I know, I don't think there's any one single thing to just say, hey, move this to the end. I think, um, I think you have the right idea. We're gonna have to save 17 in a variable, a temporary variable, and then put it on the end. Okay, so should we say that? Um, save the first element to temporary variable. Then what? And swap it with the last element. Okay, do we, should we swap it with the last element or should we just put it on to the very end? Oh, put it on the end. <laughs> okay, awesome. So put, so put that variable at the end of the array. Okay, and now what? have to remove the first element altogether. Perfect. Anything else? I think that did it, you guys. I think that's it. Okay, and then our output will just be the shifted array. All right, so our function name is rotate left. I'm hitting Control D to select both instances of this, and I'll just paste rotate left in there. Uh, and then we have list. It'll take in that list parameter. Uh, and so in I here, let's just put in this exact same array. I have a question about this. Yeah. Would the reverse method help us to do this? The reverse method. So let's look at that reverse method. So we're all on the same page. So W3 schools, JavaScript, reverse. Let's see what it says. So if I have banana, orange, apple, and mango, if I hit reverse, we end up with, it's just completely reversed, like the entire thing. So instead of just moving like one element to the end, you can see it's, Mango, ap mango, apple, orange, banana, as if we were reading from right to left. Okay, so I don't know. Do you guys think there's a way that we could re use reverse for this? Maybe not. Okay, so let's keep going. So let's go back here. So we pass in this function. Was it, Lena, I think that was, I think that was a good idea. And I think that there are several different built-in JavaScript functions that might be able to help us. And I think that we will use one at least to possibly remove this first element in the array. If anyone wants to Google that, how to remove the first element in the array, that'd be awesome. Um, so let's dive into this here. So we have rotate left and we're passing in this function. Let's actually just run this and make sure that we don't have any errors at the moment. So I'm gonna copy this file path and I'm gonna paste it in here. We'll blow this up nice and big. Oh, I don't want it there. Okay, open up my developer tools, make sure we don't have any errors. Okay, we don't need an input. We're not doing anything with that input. So let me remove both of these lines of code. Let's run this again, make sure we're still good to go. And if we run our function, we don't have any errors. We have output text right here because that is what um, my template program does. Okay, it has like a, a space holder for stuff there. Okay, are we good to this point so far? I don't see any errors or anything. Yeah, Brother Birch, the shift method works for removing the first item of an array. Perfect. So let's try that. If we take in our list, 
Well, first we need to save that first element to a temporary variable. So let's do that. Let's say var uh, first element equals, and how are we going to do this? List, List bracket 17, or sorry, zero. Perfect. Good job. Okay, sweet. So we have our first element, regardless of what it is. All right, let's run this. And let's take a breakpoint in here, making sure we got what we want. So we know we're passing in 17 as that first value. Let's run this and see what our first element is. 17, perfect. Okay, good to this point, you guys. All righty. Uh, put that variable at the end of the array. Okay, how are we gonna do that? What do you guys think? Could you use uh, the push method. Very good, so list.push first element. Okay, the push method will just add a value onto the array. So if we run this right now with our breakpoint, uh, you can see we had first element as 17 still. And as soon as we did this list.push, it added that variable, whatever we put into the parentheses of the push method, and it just added that onto the end of the array. Okay, so very good. You guys are super close. And then, um, James said we should use the shift method to remove uh, the, the, the first element in the array. So let's try that. So list.shift, like that, James? Yes. Okay, let's give that a shot. All right, so I'm gonna run this. Oh, I didn't move my breakpoint. Let's see, let's see what shift looks like, or list. Perfect. Okay, so it removed that first 17. Eight took its place with our shift method there. And I think this looks pretty good. So last thing we need to, need to do, I guess, the rotate left function, I mean, we don't even need any of that because all it said is we just need to return that array, I'm pretty sure. Let's look at it real quick. Uh, the rotate left, it looks like it doesn't specify if we're returning it or if we're printing it to the page. So let's just go ahead and print it to the page. Um, we'll just put list there. Okay. And then let's run this again. Take off that breakpoint and run it. And there's our new array. Okay. If we wanted to, we could test this with other stuff. We could add an input so that the user could actually, you know, input a string and we could, um, use string dot split to turn that into an array. And then we could make this function a little bit, um, or make this program more usable. Right now, this function is perfectly reusable. You know, we're just calling it from the HTML, um, but you could use this for for any links that any length of list uh, or anything like that. So, any questions on this or any I comments? Have, I have a question. Yeah, go ahead. Um, the word list is that a reserved name that you will always use for arrays? It is not. List is what we named. Uh, so when we passed in this array, we gave it the variable name list right here. I could name this Lynette and okay. change each instance of list to Lynette and this function would work perfectly. List is not um, a reserved keyword. You can use it. We used it as a variable name here and within the scope of that function, rotate left, it recognized that that was the, the parameter that we passed in. But we could name that anything that we wanted. List okay. is yeah, I was just wondering because they used it in all of our assignments and so that's what it, I'm wondering. It's common. It's common when, when you're dealing with arrays, it's common for people to name something just like list. Um, you know, especially with, especially with something kind of generic like this where you're just, we don't know what this data is. You know, it's just a few numbers you know, and, and regardless of what it is, we're just putting the first element in the array at the very end. And so it's common to have just like a generic, like, hey, this is my list variable. Um, generally, if you know what your list is, like if you know it's like, um, you know, ages of your family or something like that, you would say like family ages list or, or something like that, you know, a little bit, something a little bit more descriptive, but great question. Any, any other questions about this? Okay, in that case, let's see if there's any more you guys wanna see. All right, um, 
let me, I think I have, okay, so six, let's see what seven is. Write a function to rotate the elements in an array to the right. In other words, a function must move each element from its location to the location immediately to the right. So notice this one, uh, let's see, that one rotated it left with this number, this first number being pushed to the very end. And this one will do the opposite thing. So it's, it's basically taking the last element in the array and putting it at the very beginning. You guys want to do this one real quick? Okay. Sure. I'm not going to make a new file, so we'll just change that, I guess. I'm not going to rename it or anything. Uh, we are going to change this, though, to rotate right. Looks like it's still taking in a list, and it's the exact same list. So we'll just leave all this HTML the way that it was. And so let's look at our defining table. So how could we, uh, we still don't have any input, okay? In, in this program, we're just hard coding uh, this input right here. All right. Uh, but how can we, what do you guys think? So do we need to save the first element to a temporary variable? Can you pop it, then just push it as another number back onto the front of it? Let's try that. I'm just okay. wondering, it's sort of a... Yeah, so if, if anybody doesn't know what pop is, let's see if pop is any... Oh, there it is. So let's see what pop does. We have our little fruit array here, same as last time, banana, orange, apple, mango. And if I say pop, it just removes that last one from the array, okay? So it's basically like the opposite of push. Okay, it'll just remove the very the very last element from the array. Okay, so James, I think we are going to need to use pop. Uh, I think first we will need to save that last element to a temporary variable, and then um, we can just say pop the last element. Okay, so right now we'll have the last element saved to a variable. We'll remove it from the array, and then what do you guys think we should do? Here's a question, maybe a better question. Push adds a value to the end of an array. Is there a JavaScript method that can add an element to an array at the beginning of the array? Yes, the unshift. Unshift, perfect. Okay, so let's go back here. Let's look at this. Let's find unshift. This beautiful function right here. Unshift. Okay, so we have our same array right here banana, orange, apple, mango, and we're using the unshift method with lemon and pineapple. If I try it, it just adds those to the very beginning. Okay, so we'll say put that variable at the beginning of the array with unshift, and then output the shifted array. Okay, we good to this point? Okay, I think we have a sweet plan here, you guys. All right, so how do we get the last element of the array? Uh, list dot length minus one. Perfect. And we'll rename that to last element. Uh, and instead of pushing it, we're going to pop it, right? We're deleting that from, um, except actually we don't need that. List dot pop, that will just remove the last element of the array. It doesn't take any parameters. And then we're going to use unshift. Okay. So instead of shift, we'll just say unshift. And what are we going to put in the parameters in the parameter of unshift? The last element. Perfect. Okay, and then we'll output our list. So let's go back here. Let's run this. Let's put a breakpoint here just so we can walk through this our first time. So we have list coming in, uh, the, the same list that we passed through. To get our last element, let's see if that's right. It's 20. That looks good because we had 20 there. List.pop. 20 is gone. No more 20. Length is now 4 instead of 5. And then unshift, we have our last element of 20 saved here. Let's see what that looks like. Perfect. It added 20 to the beginning of the array. And we'll output that shifted array. OK, nice job, you guys. Any questions on this one? OK. All right. Now notice, I didn't have to do any Googling because you guys are awesome. But if I wanted to Google like JavaScript add to the beginning of array, unshift would come up like that, okay? So anytime you need to do something and you're like, man, how am I gonna do that? Just Google it, okay?
Okay, very frequently there will be something built into JavaScript that you can use. Um, I mean, look at all these functions right here. These are all built into arrays. Okay, this is all stuff that you can do with arrays in JavaScript. Yeah. All right, let's see what, what else we can do here. Any, any questions about anything, you guys? All right, well, let's do a couple more. Eight is our extra credit. Any assignments on the extra credit assignment, by the way? Okay, uh, let's look at nine. Write an HTML document with a button and a div. The onclick attribute of the button must call a function named crazy story with no arguments. The div must have an ID of output. Write these five functions in the head of the document all in the same script tag. Okay, choose noun, choose verb, choose adjective, choose adverb, choose integer. The first four functions must, e must each contain an array with at least 10 words. The choose noun function must contain an array with at least 10 nouns. And basically what's gonna happen is it'll go through and get items from those arrays and insert them into a massive concatenated string and will output a story, kind of like a Mad Lib. Okay, uh, this one could take a little bit of time. So is it okay if I just show you guys how I did this one a little while back? Yes. Okay. So, uh, oh, horrible example. I didn't do a defining table, sorry guys. Okay, so I have my four functions, choose noun, adverb, verb, and objective. And each one of them has an array with 10 of those types of words, okay? And then I also made a choose integer function, which would get a random number uh, between, it, a random number in this range, basically to decide which, which of these random words to use. Okay, so notice in each of these functions, so in crazy story with the concatenated string, I'm only calling choose verb, choose adverb, choose adjective. In each one of these, I return a return value from a different function. Okay, so I'm calling selected item from array or select item from array. And in the select item from array, I have min and max is array.length. Okay, so I'm passing in the array. So this array looks like it'll be about 10 long. Probably all of them will be 10 long because that's what it said, I haven't counted. Um, but so we pass in that array, whatever the length is, that'll be the max. And then it will give me a random number uh, from zero to 10 and, or from one to 10, cause, cause well, I guess zero to 10. Um, but it'll give me a random number between those to uh, basically select a random word from that array. So I pass in that array and then notice I have this array and then an opening bracket. Okay, this looks like a lot right here. If I remove this, we just have our array. I could put in a five right there and it would get the element of the array at index five of whatever array I'm passing in, depending on which function is calling this, this select item from array. But all this stuff in here, uh, I have math around so that I get a full number, a whole number out of this random stuff right here. I have math.floor to make sure to round down so I don't get something out of scope of my array. Uh, and so all this will just generate a random number from that array. And so this choose integer function, I'm not even using. I'm not sure why it's in here. Uh, but let's go ahead and run this. Any questions right now? I'm going to put breakpoints in here and we'll kind of walk through it. But do you guys have any questions to this point? OK. Uh, let me copy the file path. Put a breakpoint in here. No input. Everything's hard coded. Again, we could do the same thing that we did last time or we're, that we talked about last time, where we you know, would have an input for the user um, and they could just like put in like a common delimited string or something like that with all these words. And then we could break it out into arrays, um, but we didn't do that here. So notice the button here is going to call crazy story. So I put a breakpoint in here and that is the first place that we get to, okay? Now all of this, I'm not sure how it's gonna respond. Yeah, so it just jumped right up to choose verb because all of this will be rendered as a single line of code because of these little plus symbols right here. Okay, so it jumped right up here to choose verb. All right, we have our word array, all of our verbs. And then we go to select item from array, passing in our word array. Okay, we have it right here. Min is zero, 
max is 10. If I look at my array, that will give us everything from 0 to 10. This is 9. So that's probably why I use math.floor right here. We've seen this in previous exercises that we've done together. Um, if we didn't use math.floor right here, or if I use 9, um, you know, we, we might end up with, uh, you know, going out of scope. Because if I had 10, then we might end up isolating, um, you know, the index at 10, which doesn't exist. And so we had to use math.floor right here. And if we didn't use the max as the array.length, which is 10, then we, we would never hit um, the last word in the array. Okay. So we have min and max set dependent on the length of the array. And let's look at each one of these. So if I highlight math.random right here, we get a nice random number between 0 and 1. That's how math.random works. And that's just built into the math object of JavaScript. Uh, and I'm multiplying that by max minus min, which is 10. Okay. So if I highlight over this entire thing, we get 5 point. Oh, every time I highlight over this or hover over this, it'll rerun the random function. So right now, highlighting over it, we have 6.8, roughly. And the math.floor will force that to round down. Okay. And again, it just generated a new number. So this math.floor is now 2. Okay, but it took whatever it previously was, two point whatever, forced it down to two, and we'll add min to it to ensure that we're in the array, and in this case, the array is starting at zero. So we don't need this right now, but if we ever had a range where you know we we're going from like 20 to 30, we would need that to make sure that we're, we're within that range. And then math that round for good measure, and if I highlight over this entire thing, we'll get six. See, so it, it redid the random again. Okay, and then uh, it'll get that element of the array. Okay, and it'll do the same thing for each one of the, now we're on to adverb, it just passed an adverb here. We have all of our adverbs here, and it'll do this, it'll do this exact same thing. Okay, it passed in the adverb array. It'll get the, the range that we're going for, which is going to be zero to ten again, and then get a random number from there, and uh, and return that, okay? And then every time we do this, each one of these choose noun, choose verb is returning a value. We can return this value directly to a concatenated string, okay? And see right here how it says chase? It just ran this function, selected an item from the array, and returned the selected item from that array, okay? And each one of these that I hover over, it can do that for me on the spot, okay? Nearly. If I hover over choose adjective, if I highlight this, gentle, okay. And then it'll just concatenate them all into this one massive string and then output story. Okay. Any, any questions right now while I still have the debugger going? Okay. So I'm going to deactivate my breakpoints, hit F8, and let it go. And we have our story right here with all of our random words thrown in. That's really gross. OK, any questions? <laughs> all right, if there are no questions, I mean, if anyone wants to read that, you can. All right, so let's look at uh, our next one. 12 days of Christmas. You guys want to try this one? Uh, it says, write a program that allows a user to, let me scroll this over, to enter an integer between 1 and 12, inclusive, and that displays the corresponding lyric, lyrics from the 12 days of Christmas. For example, if a user entered 1, their program should outpoint, output, on the first day of Christmas, my true love gave to me a partridge and a pear tree. Okay? And if the user entered 4, it output, on the fourth day of Christmas, my true love gave to me four calling birds, three French hens, two turtle doves. Who wants to try this one? I do. Yeah, yeah. I want to see it. I do too. Sounds like fun. All right. Oh man, this is like the thing. No one look at this. All right. New program. Uh, let's see here. This is the program we've been using, so we'll just do this. All right. Let's open up. Where did that go? Here it is. 12 days of Christmas. And we're just going to remove all of that and that. Okay. So 12 days of Christmas. Hint, create an array that contains the ordinal numbers, first, second, third, and another array that contains the gifts, 
Use those arrays, a loop, and string concatenation to build a string that contains the lyrics. Okay, so let's give this a shot. What do you guys think for our, for our input? Let's start with our defining table. What's our input going to be? The user is going to enter a number between 1 and 12. Perfect. So a number between 1 and 12. Okay. What's our output going to be? Just so we're clear on that. The lyrics that correspond with their number. Perfect. That correspond with the number. And I'll say, uh, and everything lower than number. Just like the song. Okay, um, so let's go to our processing. What do you guys think? The hint said, create an array that contains the ordinal numbers, first, second, third. So we could create an array of strings with those 12 ordinal numbers. And another array that contains the gifts. Okay, what do you guys think about that hint? Why, do, why would we want to do that? Well, they're gonna pull from each other depending on what you put in there we'll pull from the other array with the gifts yep okay so should we do that should we say create an array with the ordinal numbers in our processing yes okay all right what else do you guys think oh i guess another array that contains the gifts we can do that one Okay, so we've created a couple of arrays. Now what? The user types in four, and we have these two arrays with like first, second, third, fourth. How are we gonna output the lyrics, fourth day of Christmas, all this stuff, what do you guys think? Can you just um, put whatever number they entered in minus one to pull it out of the, for the numbers, and then maybe the same for the gifts, and then everything below that? Yeah, yeah, so I think, we, I, think I get what you're saying. So we start, so if they type in four, let's say this is an array. Let's say each of these are a zero-based array, okay? So one would be at the index of zero, two would be in the index of one. So the user types in four, all right, and this four is going to be the index of zero, one, two, three. So we might have to, so like you said, we take um, input from user minus one to get the index of that array. Um, and we'd have to get our ordinal number. So on the fourth day of Christmas, um, so we could say ordinal array Oops. Get that. And that could like start our string. Okay. So I'm pretty sure our string is always going to start with on the. So we could create a string that says um, um, create lyric string that starts with on the. Okay. Because if we do that, then each time we go through, you know, with the ordinal number. And then all the gifts, we can just kind of like append to that string. What do you guys think of that? That sound good? Okay. Mm -hmm. So it starts with on the, and then we will add uh, that. Okay, so that'll be like four, third, whatever. Um, add this to string. Uh, and then what are we gonna need to add? What do you guys think? So we currently have on the fourth if they typed in four. You mean add on to the lyrics or add on to the... I, I was thinking add on to the string, which is going to be the lyric string. This is going to be constant, right? On the fourth day of Christmas, my true love gave to me. That's always going to be there, right? We could add that. Okay. And then... Similar to what we did with this right here with our ordinal array, getting that value from there depending on the input from the user. Uh, to see what our first thing is going to be, if they type in four, we're going to have to get four calling birds. 
So we could probably do that same thing with, with the gift array. Do you guys agree? Okay. Yeah. So I'm going to copy this line of code and paste it here and say add uh, gift array input from user minus one to string. Okay. So now at this point, we're going to be right here. Okay. So we're going to have to add a comma and, and some other stuff if the number is greater than one. And if it's not greater than one, it looks like we're going to have to add a period. Do you guys agree with that statement? Okay. Mm -hmm. So we're going to need some logic here. Um, if greater than one, let's say if input is greater than one, then um, add a comma and a space. Else, add a period. What do you guys think so far? Does that sound OK? OK. Yeah. Uh, so with that comment, we could probably add something else in here. Um, so we have gift array. So right now, we're sitting right here okay, with the four calling birds. We just added our comma and our space. And then we're probably going to have to loop through, right? For however many numbers are, OK. So in here, so if it's greater than 1, we'll add a comma. And then we should probably loop, OK? So if our number is 4, and we already added that fourth value of the array, we're going to be counting down until we hit 1. Um, so we can say loop from input minus 1 to zero. And in that loop, we're going to add, could probably actually add this comma inside that loop, and then add um, gift array at the index of i, maybe. This is just our defining table. We're thinking through this. OK, so if we did loop through this, Okay, if the number is greater than one, we're going to have to loop. If not, we just add a period, and that's great. Okay, but if it's greater than one, we'd loop over and over and over again, adding each element of the gift array with a comma and a space, um, and then it needs to be less than the number inputted. That has to count backwards. Yes. So we'll say count backwards. There. I think this is in the wrong spot, this add the period, because we're not going to get the period at the very end if we have anything greater than one at this point. So maybe we should have the loop. Well, what do you guys think? How should we add our period in here? Should we just have another if statement inside of our loop? So here's a question. What would happen if the user inputted one and we looped? We just loop once, right? Is that, a, is that an issue? Because what I'm thinking, if we had our loop on the outside and our if statement on the inside, I think we could get by with having one if statement, one loop, and we would just like inside of our loop, we'd check to see if our number is greater than one. If it is, we'd add a comma and our gift array thing and if not, we just add our period. Do you guys think that could work? OK, let's give it a shot. So we'll put our loop up here. If statement inside, move all that over. If input is greater than 1, then we'll add this to our string. If not, we'll add a period. OK, how do you guys like our defining table? Oh, and then we need to output. Oh, lyrics that correspond with the number. Perfect. We already did the output. All right. So, what do you guys think? Anything else we need to add? Does this look okay? Should we give it a shot? What do you guys think? I think it looks good. Okay. Yeah, give it a shot. Well, let's give it a shot. So, it doesn't look like they gave us a function name or anything to use. 
they're getting lazy on us. So let's just call this um, sing to me. And then in here, we're not going to have a list. We're going to have a number. We'll just say user number. Uh, and then in here, sing to me, let's actually let the user input something. That's a novel thought. So we'll have an input type text. And we'll make the ID user input. OK. Have a couple of breaks. A button to sing to me in here we'll have to grab that value so um, var user input equals document dot get element by ID and that is user input dot value do we need to parse it let's parse it certainly can't hurt okay all right before we get any further, let's run this, make sure we don't have any crazy errors that we're going to have to debug. OK, no errors. We have a nice little input here. Let's put a breakpoint in here and run our function. Make sure we get it. OK, um, that's not a number because we didn't put anything in here. This is going to throw a massive error because we don't have a list. Um, so let's come back in here and work on this. But we didn't have any errors before we got to that point, so this is happy. Don't need any of that. We're going to output, let's just say, lyrics. Oops. We'll say var lyrics equals, I'm going to blow this up a little bit. And I'm just going to follow. So we have create an array that contains the ordinal numbers. Create another one that contains the gifts. Create the lyric string that starts with on the. OK. Let's get those other ones. Um, I'm going to move this over here one sec, because I'm pretty sure I declared these in the other one that we did, or in the other one that I did. And then we can just copy them. All right, we have our gift array. Move this back here. Oops, where'd that go? Sorry, you guys. All right, there's our gift array. And... In my program, I wrote a function to get my ordinal numbers with a loop. Do you guys want to see that real quick? And then we can write it out. <laughs> it's way too confusing. See, I guess I had too much time on my hands. So I wrote this function called ordinal suffix. It takes an integer. So I could loop through 12 times and push to that array every time I loop through. Uh, and depending on what size the integer is, so I thought through it, I'm like, okay, we're only going to use, I, I was like, okay, the only ones that actually have like ST or ND are like first and second and third is different, but the rest of them were fourth. I noticed that it's 21st, 22nd, 23rd. Anyways, so I looped through using the modulus to see what type of number it would be uh, if it ended with first or second or third, and then I would return that integer, okay? Um, or that's that string with the uh, ordinal suffix. But anyways, we're not going to worry about that. Let's just um, make an array. So var, uh, what did we call it? Ordinal array? Dinal array? Equals. And we're starting with the first right here. So we'll just say first. It's an array. Sorry, guys. First, second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh, eighth, ninth, tenth, eleventh, twelfth, twelfth. Is that right? Okay, I'm going to highlight each of these commas. I'm going to hit Control D after selecting one. Hold Control Shift and my right arrow to select all of those and hit an apostrophe to put those all in quotes. Okay, good to this point. We have two arrays declared and some beautiful lyrics. We good? Okay, let me let's refresh this, make sure we don't have any errors. Okay, and now we should probably even be able to run it and we have our output string. Okay, so 
Now the uh, fun part. Okay, so we created these, and now add from the ordinal array input from user minus one to the string. Okay, so let's go ahead and do that. So lyrics plus equals, and we're gonna do the ordinal array user input minus one. Is that what you guys wanted? Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, let's run that, see what we get there. If I run this function on the undefined, let's put in a five there and run it on the fifth. Beautiful. Okay, that's exactly what we wanted. All right, let's just check 12, make sure that we get the 12th value. Let's check first. Okay. All right, we good till now? Okay, let's look at our next one. Add day of Christmas, my true love gave to me. Okay, that will always happen. So let's just say plus that. Okay, I could have added that onto another line of code using the same thing, but I figured since it's always gonna be like this, we'll just leave it in the same line of code. So if I say one, on the first day of Christmas, my true love gave to me. Okay. All right. Add from the gift array that. Okay, let's look at their prompt here. So it's just gonna output all in a single string, it looks like. We're not using any breaks or anything. Okay, so nice and simple. Let's come back here. So we add from the gift array the first one to the string, because we're always gonna have one. Uh, so I'm gonna come down here and say lyrics plus equals, and then let's just copy this. and change it to gift array. Okay, let's run it again, see what we get. If I say five, on the fifth day of Christmas, my true love gave to me five golden rings. You guys, this is awesome. Okay, how's it looking to you guys? All right, let's keep going. Now, according to our defining table, we have, let's see, we did that, loop from the top to the bottom. Okay, what do you guys want to do? For, while, for each, do, what are you guys thinking? I was thinking of four myself. Love it, let's do it. So four, I equals, we're starting with user input minus one, right? You know what I want to do? Let's declare another, this is going to add a line of code but it'll make it a little bit easier to read. So I'm gonna say um, var last element equals user input minus one, okay? Then if for any reason we needed to change these or anything like that, um, it would be changed in one place. Anytime we have to use like the same variable to get other stuff multiple times um, or math they have to use multiple times, you always wanna declare it in its own, in its own variable let to debug. Okay, so we have last element. So for var i equals last element, i is less than, what's it gonna be less than, you guys? Or is it greater than? Your input? Yeah, so we have, i is going to be the input, or the last element of the array, or of, what will be the array, but it's, it's coming straight from the user input. So i is equal to last elements. Right now, the last one I said was five, okay? Five golden rings. So i is gonna be, be equal to four to be able to get that fifth value from these arrays. So i is equal to four at the moment, while i is greater than zero, greater than or equal to zero, okay? Because if this last element is four, and it's getting five golden rings, it'll be, we're gonna need it to be greater than or equal to zero because we're gonna have to get that zero with element of the array. Okay, then I minus minus. How's that look? I'll take silence says that looks okay. All right, so we have our loop set up. Hopefully it's good. We'll see if it's good or not. But let's put something in it so we can test it. We have some logic here if input is greater than one. So we have if uh, user input, oops, made some parentheses there. User input is greater than one. 
Then we're going to add this to our lyrics. Lyrics plus equals that. Okay, so if it's greater than one, we'll add this. We'll always have, if it is just one, we'll always have that first element there. Okay, if it's greater than one, we'll add a comma and whatever i is currently at we might have to we might have to change this that might have to be i minus one or something like that else add a period so lyrics plus equals a period okay how's this look before we run it won't we need a period at the end even if um like we need a period at the end in both cases and yes so, so let's take this oh yeah yes what do you think i was just going to say put it on the the very end like the document dot get element by id put a period on the end of the lyrics there perfect how's that look or yeah like you said we could just put it down here is that what you're thinking? That's what I was thinking. I'm not sure if right. that would work. I think that would work flawlessly. Okay, let's give it a shot. I don't know if the other stuff will work flawlessly. Let's, let's just run it and see what happens. Okay, on the fifth day of Christmas, my true love gave to me five golden rings, five golden rings, four calling birds, three French hens, two turtle doves, and a partridge in a pear tree. Period. So that looks almost perfect. What do we have to change in the program? It's repeating itself twice before okay. it counts down. So what would be the best way to change that? Before it, when it, it doesn't output until after it's, well. Hmm. I have an idea. Here's my thought process. <laughs> so initially, we added um, this first element on here so that it would always get it, okay? If, if user input's greater than one, that's fine. We already added the first element there, okay? So if he did put in one, you know, we don't need to add a comma or anything like that. Um, but what if, what if we went like this? What if we took this out completely the only logic we have, let's see. So if we put this, so my initial thought was that we could just like take off these three lines of code, but then we'd have a comma before partridge in a pear tree if they input one, okay? So right here, we should just say, so we declare that, add the first element there. If it's greater than one, so what if we put this inside of our loop? This will be i, that is the last element. We're signing it right there. Okay, so we'll assign the last element in the array. And then if user input is greater than one, we add a comma. What do you guys think? Give it a shot. Okay, so I'm refreshing this. I'm gonna hit five and run it. On the fifth day of Christmas, my true love gave to me five golden rings, four calling birds, three French hens, two turtle doves, and a partridge in a pear tree, comma, space, period. <sighs> okay, so we got some work to do. Uh, that obviously didn't work. It almost did. It looked great until that. We could take off a couple characters at the very end if we wanted to right here, but I feel like it'd be better to just not do it in the first place. Um, so right here, we could add another condition that says, and i is not equal to zero. Okay, that'd be pretty 
easier to do it because then the last time we loop, we just won't add that. So if I ran that, you can see it just ended it with a period. Okay, if we put in 12, let's see what happens. Which will give me 12 drummers drumming, 11 pipers piping. Okay, so what do you guys think about our program? Any questions? There are multiple ways to do this. We could have done that last little bit in a lot of different ways. What do you guys think? All right, let me go back to this one. It's a little bit bigger. You guys good? Do you want to do one more before we go to the exam? The exam prep? Can we just explain real fast how you got it so it didn't repeat itself the very first time? I'm yes. Kind of follow along there, but. Yeah, so initially we had it right here that we would add the first element in the array to the lyrics before we even looped. And then inside of our loop, we would add gift array at the index of i, which the first time we looped was the last element in the array. Okay, so that's why it was doing it twice, because in the loop it did it, and before the loop we declared it. Okay, the other way we could have done that is to declare i equals last element minus one, because if we had already declared the last element, if we had already added that to the lyrics, then we wouldn't even have to do this. We would have just added. Um, we wouldn't have added that last element. We would have started the array or we would have started the loop at one less because we would have already added that one. So, so multiple ways to go about this, but yeah, the way that we did it, we just said, okay, loop through this. And if it's not the last item, then, then add a comma. So, Brother nice. Birch. Yeah. What if on your loop you had just gone um, I is greater than zero and not greater than or equal to zero? Would that have done the same thing as no, because then we would have missed partridge in a pear tree. Let's oh, try okay. it. So if I ran that right now and hit five, yeah, we missed our last one. Because partridge oh. in a pear tree is what is what's sitting at zero. I see. Um, but yeah, but the other way is if we had said um, I first, we will have had to have added to the lyrics right here, plus equals uh, gift array last element. Okay, so we would have added, you know, the first one there, which in this case would have been five golden rings, but if they put in one, it would have been partridge in a pear tree. And then in here, um, we'd say last element minus one, because we've already added that last element right here. Okay, so we, in this case, we loop from four down to zero. That's confusing. Um, from index of three down to zero, but the four calling birds, that's where we're starting our loop from. Uh, and then we just add this and um, we, we could have done it down here in the comma as well. And we wouldn't have needed this. Okay. But, so yeah, multiple ways to do this. Okay, Did that answer your question, James? Yeah, thank you. Okay, yep. Any other questions or comments? Okay, well, I think we should do one more because there's one more that I really like. Whoops. Um, let's see. At least I think there was one more that. I, yeah, this one. This is a very practical thing. Both of these. Okay, so eleven is write an HTML document with two text areas and a button. Write a JavaScript program that will read all the text from the first one, split it into an array, sort the area numerically, and display the sorted numbers in the second text area. Okay, I, I think that's really cool and very practical. The reason why I say it's practical is because you will, you're always gonna have to like sort stuff and parse stuff and and different things like that and just like deal with data. I feel like this like works really well with, with the data. Uh, number 12 was write a JavaScript program that allows a user to enter a list of names in a text area. When the user clicks a button, the program should output the list of names without any duplicates. Okay, in other words, the program should output each name only once. Okay. So I think we should do one of these. Oh, that one's kind of cool too. We're not, yeah. So I think we should do one of these. Which one do you guys want to do? Eleven. Okay, let's do eleven. All right. So let's pull up our program here. That's not our program. Oh yeah, it is. Okay. So. 
We don't want sing to me. Well, I guess we'll leave that for a sec. And our defining table. Okay, so what is our defining table going to look like? What's our input going to be? All of the text from the first text box. Yep. A bunch of numbers from a text box. Brother Birch. Yeah. I'm pretty sure there's an example in the book where they did almost the exact same thing in the chapter. Oh, is this right here? Yeah. But it shows them doing it with names, alphabetical oh. order hmm. in my book. But it doesn't matter. We could totally do it again. Sorting numbers. I think it was example 22 in the book. 22. Wow, that does look really similar. Compare two values, S1 and S2, and returns negative one. Okay. And all right, so let's go ahead and do it. This is gonna be a little bit different. This is comparing strings with our numbers. We're we're going to be able to compare them a little bit differently, but there's also a fair bit that will go into spitting out text in a text area like this. Um, do you guys want to still do it, or, or do you, would you guys rather do, do a different one? I'd like to still do it. Okay, let's go ahead and do it. Where did that go? Number 11. Okay. All right, so a bunch of numbers from text boxes are input. Our output will be this right here display the sort of numbers. Processing, okay, it already gave us one, split the text into numbers in an array, okay, so I'll just copy and paste that in here. All right, any idea how we're gonna do that? Use dot split. Okay. Uh, sort the array numerically. Okay. If we look over here, there's this nice little sort function that we could look at later, but that's what we're going to use. So we'll use sort. Uh, what else? What else are we going to need? Display the sort of numbers in the second text area. Okay. I think one of the reasons I like this too is because there's a fair bit of CSS that you have to do to make it look like this. So we'll also look at that as well. Um, and okay, anything else that we're gonna have to do? When you display an array, um, we did this earlier, um, but when you just say document that get element by ID, inner HTML equals, and then you put an array right here, what does that usually look like? They're all next to each other with commas and no spaces. And it's pretty ugly, yep. Okay, so how are we gonna turn this sorted array into this? Is it a table? This is not a table. So this a lot of types? It's just a text area. So it's, it's gonna be a string. So then a lot of breaks in between each? A lot of breaks in between each. Yep. So we're, let's see, we're going to have to convert the array into a string with breaks in it. Okay. Now, we can do this a couple of ways. We could loop through, the, loop through the array and concatenate a string. Okay. That'd be really easy. There might be a JavaScript function to do the exact same thing. I don't know. It might be worth checking. You guys want to check real quick? Let's check. JavaScript convert array to string. Ooh, do you see that autocomplete thing? It said with separator. I wonder what that was. Okay, so this right here to string. Let's see what it outputs. Looks exactly the same, even though it's a string. Okay, so maybe we should Google with the separator, unless this takes a parameter. Doesn't look like it takes a parameter. So let's go back. Ooh, array join. Let's see what join does. 
Join returns the array as a string. Elements will be separated by a specified separator. The default separator is a comma. Okay, so that separator is going to be as a parameter. We should do that instead of a loop. What do you guys think? Okay, so sing to me. Let's change that name to sort array. We're going to need a text area. So let's remove that input. Let's put a text area right here. And in this text area, we're not going to type anything in yet, but we do need an ID. We'll say input, let's say user input. And then we'll have another one. We'll just call it output. Okay, in between, we're going to need a button to sort. And what's that button going to look like? Oh, that's not what I want. Just going to say sort. All right. Don't need that or that. Okay. Uh, let's go ahead and run this. Oh, it's right here. Okay, so I'm going to refresh this. Look at that. It's hideous. I guess that's not as bad. Okay, if we look at our other one, sort at the, sorts at the top. I have no idea how they did that. Um, and then we have these two things, which you can you can drag either one of them to any. That's just what text areas do. You can make them any size you want. But let's work on the the programmatical side before we do the styling side. So if I say like one five, have a big old bunch of numbers in there. I'll blow this up a little bit. Okay, and let's just make sure that this is working. No errors. So that's from our last program. So we didn't have any errors. So this is just going to be output. Okay, that's where we're going to output to. And we'll worry about, let's just say output string is what we'll call it. Okay. Now, we need to get the user input. Okay, so we've done that a bunch in this class. Say document.getElementById, user input dot value. And that will be of our input string is what I'll call it. Okay, so we have the input right here. Let's go ahead and run this, make sure that we're getting the results that we want. And let's see what the input string looks like. Okay, so if I have a bunch of numbers right here, here's what I typed in. If I hit sort, there's our input string. Whoops. Okay, doesn't have any breaks or anything. It's got this character. If you look here, I didn't put in any spaces, but you can see that it kind of looks like each one has a space after it where there's a line break. Okay, but that's what our input string looks like. All right, so we need to split that into an array. So we have to figure out what that character is. Okay, so let's just Google it. Um, JavaScript um, new line character. backslash n, okay? So in here, whoops, we're going to use dot split, right? So we're going to say var user array, I'll just say number array equals input string dot split, and let's see if that works, okay? So let's come back over here and refresh it. I'm going to put a breakpoint right there. Type in a couple of numbers. Here's what I got. Hit sort over input string, same as before. Split, you can see, is a function right here that works on strings in JavaScript. And what is number array? It worked. Okay, we have our array of strings. Okay. So are we going to be able to sort this array the way that we want to? No. No, we're not. Okay, we need to turn those into numbers. So let's make a little loop right here. It says for var i equals zero. i is less than number array dot length i plus plus. And then we can call this string array. 
and we'll make a new array here called var number array. And then in here, we'll just say number array dot push parse float um, string array at the index of i. OK, does that make sense? You guys think that'll work? Oops. OK, well, let's go ahead and give it a shot and see what we get. So put in a couple of numbers here. We'll sort it. We have our array of strings. We declare number array. If I jump down here, let's see what we get for number array. We have an array of numbers. OK. We get to this point. All right. So now that we have our array of numbers, let's try this sort function. OK. So we'll just say um, number array dot sort. Now let's see if this changes the array or if we're going to have to assign that to a new variable. OK, so if I say 5, 7, 2, put a breakpoint right there, hit sort. We have number array, 5, 7, 2. If I hit sort, we now have 2, 5, 7. OK, and that is the new value of number array, 2, 5, 7. OK, all right, now what do we need to do? Output, um, output the array right into the other text box. Yeah, let's try that. Let's see what happens. I'm going to take off this breakpoint. We know that we've sorted our array. Okay, I have a bunch of numbers right here. If I hit sort. There, there's our array, just the way we anticipated us printing an array. Um, so let's use. We Googled it a second ago. It was join, I believe, this guy right here. And it does it by a separator. Okay, So right now, uh, we want to put this back into this right here. And remember the way that we split this, the separator that we used was this backslash n. That's how you do a, a, a line, a new line character in JavaScript. Okay, So what if we did join with that same backslash n? Let's give that a shot, see what we get. So we can say output string equals number array dot join backslash n. OK, so we'll join them by this separator. So this is what we'll, we'll separate each value in our array being joined in this string, hopefully. OK, so let's give it a shot. There's what we have. I hit sort. I forgot to do a breakpoint. I'll do one right there. OK, so number array sort. We have our sorted array. And let's see what we get for output string. One, four. Whoops, sorry, guys. One, four, five, nine. OK, so if we put that in our output instead and run it, let me take off this breakpoint. Five, one, four, seven, 11. And sort it. Interesting, it did 11 first, because I wonder if we sorted it as a, as a string. Let's see, let's put a breakpoint in here. Other than that, I think it looks pretty good. What do you guys think? All right, let's put a breakpoint in here. So we have number array 514711, and we sort it. Hmm, what would you guys do with this issue? What do you guys think? What would you do with this issue? Want to see what I'd do? Yes. <laughs> I 
JavaScript, sort numerically. If numbers are sorted as, as strings, 25 is bigger than 100 because 2 is bigger than 1. Okay. Stack Overflow, how to sort an array of integers correctly. Sounds kind of like what we need to check it out. Okay. Interesting. So it looks like they used a little function. Sort can so the sort function can take in a parameter. And we've looked at this before as well, but you can pass in a function that will sort it however you want it. If I wanted to like sort it by like skipping values or by odd values or like from top to bottom, bottom to top, alphabetically, whatever, you know, I could make another function to pass in as a parameter right here um, and, and make it sort in that way. Okay. And still output whatever we wanted. In this case, it looks very simple. It just says, okay, return A minus B, and it'll just go through the entire array as it sorts it, and it'll make sure that the values will be in the right order. Okay, so let's paste this in here. And let's put this right here to tell it how we want to sort it, okay? Oh, I'm going to remove that breakpoint. Hit F5. 5, 3, 7, 11, 1, 22, 15. Okay. So I have a bunch of them starting with 1. Let's see how, we, how it does. Okay. It did it right. 1, 3, 5, 7, 11, 15, 22. Now notice in this right here, let's say I said um, B minus A. Okay, this will give us the adverse effect. An opposite and, and do it in descending order. Okay, because it'll, it'll return those values that were less than the, the, one, the one that came after it. Okay, and it'll, and it'll put them all in the right order. Okay, so let's leave that the way that it was. Okay. Any, any questions about the JavaScript side of this program? Okay, in that case, let's look at the styling side super fast and then we're, we're gonna take a break from, from programming real quick. So text areas, um, we want them to look like, where'd that go? like this, right? So if I go in our program, in our styling, I can just say text area, and this will isolate every text area in the document. Um, let's make the width 100 pixels. Okay, that looks like about 100 pixels to me. And then let's make the height, well, let's say min height is 300 pixels. Okay, so let's try that and see what it looks like. Refresh the page. Okay, so that looks a little bit more like what we're dealing with. The button needs to move. Okay, so let's change that real quick. Um, so again, right here, that will isolate every button. If I wanted, I could put an ID in here like this. Um, some ID. And then I could style by a specific ID. Or I could also have a class as well. And what that would look like if I just said class some fancy styling, then up here I could say some fancy styling and do whatever I wanted to with it. Okay, but we don't have to do that right now. Pretty simple program. So I'm just going to change the button and say uh, position, and we want it to be on top. So just say top. So if I run this. Oh, didn't want to do it. Let's see here. Come back over here. So our button right here. Put the position on the top. I thought oh. buttons had to be in a div in order to move them. 
They certainly can be. They don't have to be. Um, so this right here, it didn't change that because um, of its like default display. So if I say display inline, no, notice all these different attributes of display. Where were those? Display. See all these different things right here? These are all different values that the display attribute can receive. Let's start with I, okay? There's a lot of them, okay? So, but I'm gonna say inline block, and then let's see if that does it. It might not. Nope, didn't do it. Okay, let's do one more. Uh, vertical align top. Let's try that. There we go. Let's see if we even need that. I'm gonna comment that out, refresh it again. So we didn't need that first line of code. Okay, let's see if we needed that one. We didn't need that one either. Okay, so vertical line top, that is our one to make our button go up to the top. It's not in a div or anything like that. I just said, hey, set the vertical alineation to the top. I don't know if that's a word. I'm gonna be really embarrassed when I start teaching on campus because I make up words sometimes or use words that like are out of context and it's embarrassing. My wife has, laughs at me. <laughs> Anyways, all right, so what do you guys think? Does this look okay to you guys? Looks okay, good. we haven't done much with styling this semester. We, we went all focused on like math. Sorry, guys. All right, so there's that program. Uh, if you guys want to see any of these other programs, we can look at them another time. I'm going to stop this really long recording and...